Let's see, waiting on Coop to get in the room. What up? Keep coming in the room, y'all. Yo, Coop, what's good, man? How you doing? What's going on, man? How are you? Let me get stood up. I'm good, man. We're on this um we're on this late night show, sipping a little bit. Yeah, um, me too. This is gonna be called Old Fashioned. <laughs> Old Fashioned, there you go. I, you know what? I just did scotch and water tonight, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I actually got my orange bitters and my um my um um sweetener and all that stuff, but yeah. Uh, brown sugar, orange bitters, Angus stir bitters. You doing bullet rock? Big rock. Yeah. Okay. All right. We could. I'm sure we can nerd out on some bartender talk too. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can do it. <laughs> but tonight we're on some music tonight. What up, Scotty J? We talking about the most underrated MCs of all time. Yeah. And it's what well, we're gonna do. Top five most underrated, right? Um, yeah, I believe geez, we discussed man. five. We discussed five, and then we also yeah, we discussed down. we also discussed the top ten hip hop verses of all time. We got to kind of qualify that list too. Shout out to y'all in the room. Keep coming in the room. Who yeah, do you think I, it is I most underrated to rapper? That too, but I wanted to hear what you had to say about it first. Uh, you know what? I think the impact is a lot. You know, what I'm saying when we're talking about verses, because you know, a lot of us could, like I said, we can nerd out on some. Holocaust Bobby Digital verse, like, you know, you fall into an endless tunnel of doom reality, graphically, my killer bee family sings the galaxy. I mean, those are hard verses, but yeah, those aren't verses that, you know what I'm saying, we throw any record on anywhere in the country, everybody can repeat it word for word, like Slick Rick's verse on Children's Story. You want to know what I noticed? I'm going to tell you something that I did. I actually went back, like, all the verses that we chose. I went back and listened to all of those verses today. And one thing that really stuck out to me, all of those verses come from classic albums. They do. They're all classic albums. So that's part of why people listen, listen too. It's not just the quality of the song and the verse. They're all part of classic albums. Like all You're actually verses, right. I'm... Yeah, well, go look at our look at go look at our verses that we chose. That was one of the things that stuck out to me today. Hmm. We talk about, well, we're gonna get to the verses. About, that yeah, we, when we get to it, yeah, I'm excited because like we're gonna get to the verses that we chose. But yeah. let's keep it real, man. Jay Z didn't make it. I, it's not that Jay Z yeah. didn't make it. Jay Z didn't have a verse on there. Okay, is so that surprising to you? Him being the goat, no. I had to throw that in there. I'm going to tell you what. One of the things that stuck out to me is that Jay, uh, Rakim, and Andre 3000 and Black Thought didn't make our Those were some of my takeaways after listening to music today. Because I kind of got, I, I just got off and started digging today, you know. And I think a big part of that, though, is the fact that they are so consistently good. It's really hard to pick a standout. You know, that, as it relates to other people, you know? That's, that's one thing that I noticed that really stood out, is that they're remarkably consistent. It's like the only person I think who we chose who has arguable greater verses than the verse that we chose is probably Nas. And he probably hasn't been considered as consistent in those guys, but I think he's also done some material to guys, too. That's true. Um, you know, for the people that are just getting in the room, shout out to... Uh, Mr. Bogus out there, Chicago. Um, we are talking about the top five most underrated MCs of all times. We got a list together. We're kind of compiling it right now. We want to get y'all input. And we're also talking about the top 10 hip hop verses in hip hop history. So a lot of that's based on impact. We're kind of qualifying what that list means. Um, all right. Jay, well, Nas has some breakthrough verses, right? Like, he got the live at the barbecue, and I do think that, you know, the one that actually made our list was a breakthrough verse, too, on. on a very important album. I don't think Jay has those. Jay just came with his album. And does Jay have a breakthrough verse? I don't know. Reasonable Doubt. I mean, I think, and we talked about it last time, Reasonable Doubt such a uh, breakthrough uh, album in terms of the rhetoric and how the rhetoric right. is being uh, explained in the depth of the rhetoric. So, like, like most people, their best version of Jay to them is usually the Reasonable Doubt blueprint version. There's not any particular verse that stands out to me on either one of those albums that I'm just, like, blown away. Um, lyrical exercise at the end of the blueprint, the one of the bonus tracks, lyrical exercise, like like that first verse is pretty like 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 heavy. It's one of those like if you're ahead, like you can see what he's doing. 
and see what he's doing, not only like lyrically, but cadence wise, flow wise, what he did breath control wise, to give certain nuances to his verse, to his voice, the verse. You know, I mean, to that point, I like what he did on uh, Hobie Baby. Where he's like, seven straight summers, critics might not admit it, but nobody in rap did it quite like I did it. Did it, I done it before you get it, I had it, got mad at that. That stuff, uh, he was rhyming on a high level at, on the Blueprint, See, too. You want to know it? And, and that's crazy, because I don't like that album, but I'm going to be honest with you. His verse on The Watcher and that verse we're talking about on Holy Baby, those are probably two of his five best verses. Yeah. But you know what You know what I think Jay's best verse, if we want to zero in on Jay-Z? I think his last verse on Streets is Watching could possibly be his best verse. That, that verse is perfect. heavy. Yeah, no, and the no. only reason why I wouldn't consider that for a list like this is again the impact and all that stuff. Like you know, yeah, what I'm like, like I'm gonna be honest with you, I love his uh, I love imaginary player, like the whole imaginary oh, yeah. player, like those second and third verses. But it's like I don't know if it's top ten, but it's great. It's brilliant. We have a uh, one of our research guys, man, Safola. Shout out to Safola out there. He's actually gonna do a breakdown video about who imaginary play is really about you know who imaginary play is about right actually i don't inform me it's mace wow really he's dissing mace that whole record like uh i don't know if you remember that song off of mace's album uh what he said uh what's the name of that song man hold on hold on and what's so you know you know jay is kind of like the he's the king of of um uh, uh, of underlining disses, man, and imagine yeah, he, throws player, he throws a lot of shit. He's the subliminal king, and when you listen to Hobie Bay, I'm not Hobie Bay, when you listen to Imaginary Player, that whole record is about Mace. I'm, you wanna know what? I'm gonna go back and like, and, and, and like, kind of like check that, because like, I never peeped that, but you wanna know, I'm in love with Imaginary Player. It's actually one of my favorite Jay records. Me too. Yeah. And, and so when, when Brandon brought that to my attention, records. when he yeah, brought that to my attention, I was like, really? And like I, I've listened to the song all the years that didn't even know it was about Mace. Like for me, when people talk about Jay, like the Jay that they love, like I think Imaginary Player is actually one of the best examples of the Jay that like we love. That and like politics as usual. Like those songs to me are the records that it's like that's the Jay that like I think like the old head love. Like when he's talking like that. Well, all right. Well, the song is uh Niggas Wanna Act. That May song. You remember that? You remember the lyrics yeah. on that? I don't remember the lyrics on Well, there was a part where he <laughs> called Jay out. Where he said at the end of that first verse, let me go to the lyrics real quick. He was like, and this was unnecessary because I think May started this. He was like, I think May started it? Yeah. At, at the end of this song, he said, hustle is hustle, so I never knock a nigga. You hear me? He was like, hustle is hustle, so I never knock a nigga. Don't really fuck with Dane, but I cop Jigger. And if you listen to the rest of that song is kind of about hustlers or people acting like they got it like this and got it like that and imaginary <laughs> player was the answer to that record because a lot of stuff he said in here jay pointed out on imaginary player so i'm gonna tell you what like i love me some murder maze and i like maze but I was never, like, really, really big on Mace. I'm going to have to run back and listen to that again because, like, Mace came along in a time where it's, like, I really didn't, like, like, like get down with cats like Mace like that, like that. But I got down with where he came from. You know? You listen, to, listen to that song and then listen to Imaginary Player. And Imaginary Player is clearly oh, about Mace. Yeah. Hey, what up to everybody in the room? Uh, yeah, so when he said, it's funny how one verse could fuck up the game, that's yeah. the verse you're talking about. Ah, yeah. Listen to both of those back to back, and it's yeah, like, wow, that might be the best the subliminal <laughs> diss ever. <laughs> it's like you got these young cats acting like they slung cats, all in the dumb raps, talking about how they fun stats. When I see you in the street, I don't see none of that. Damn, Playboy, the fuck's the hum at? Where's all the ice and all the platinum under that? Those ain't Rolex diamonds. What the fuck what you done to that? that? <laughs> Rapping ass niggas, y'all funny to me. I love Selling it. records being you, but still you want to be me. Who's he talking about in 97? Let's be honest. <laughs> Ooh, that's very valid. That's very I mean, valid. and when he said, uh, nigga, I mean, quit he's eternally, he's eternally throwing shade because it's like I always, always halfway thought that was a Nas shot because Nas didn't show up on that's Reasonable Doubt. Nice. See, I thought that's that nice. was another shade that he was throwing because keep in mind, that's, that's the year after Nas did like two, three million records when it was written. 
Right, right, right. Right, right. And so he did this over a Bad Boys producer's record. And it, I think it's notable to know that he recorded that album. Well, that was album was recorded. I'm sorry, it was executive produced by Diddy. So it was recorded in Daddy's house or whatever. So he probably heard this nigga's want to act before it actually came out. Well, he, well, he was watching Life After Death get made, too. Like, he was there with yeah. a lot of Life After Death get made, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um... But yeah, listen to those records back to back for y'all that are just joining us. Um, I'm excited. Um, Give me a reason to listen to this. All right. <laughs> Our research guy, Safolo, shout out to him. He is actually going to be doing a breakdown video of how Imaginary Play is about Mace. And it's a response record to um, Mace's song, Niggas Wanna Act. But I'm with you, though. That, that's my favorite Jay-Z. I feel like Jay-Z is the best when he is in uh, conversational mode. I think that Imaginary Play is one of those conversational mode moments. Yeah, like like one of the best things about that record is actually that he's talking in between the record. Like, yo, dog, what's the difference between a 4.0 and a 4.6? <laughs> he's talking to one person because he said, nigga, quit whining. Jigga's still shining. He didn't say niggas. He said, nigga, he's talking to you. Well, man. that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So, all right, and uh, let's go to Andre. He didn't have a verse on our all-time list, but we all know Andre's <laughs> excellent. On. And his his outcast portfolio is pretty flawless. I mean, what do you think Andre's best verse is? His best verse? I'm, I think I'm kind of I, th I think I think Babylon off of AT Aliens is the wow. first verse that I heard from him where I was like, oh, he's superb. Like he's like he's like better than all those guys from New York too. Hmm. So, like, I think that was impactful in that sense. If you're from, from down here like we are, I don't think we ever heard anybody rap like that. Yeah. Down here. And that was 96. And that's not to say other dudes couldn't rap. I mean, Bun B, Pimp C, Face, you know, and we're going to get into all that, you know. But CeeLo, if you look at just in their camp. You know, you know, one of the things that I think we didn't talk about is actually CeeLo's verse on Get Up, Get Out. CeeLo has the best verse on Get Up, Get Out. I like yeah. Andre's delivery on uh, Get Up, Get Out, but you're right, CeeLo has the best verse. I was fortunate <laughs> enough to have a, a conversation with Ray Murray from Organized Noise, and, um, and I, don't, wow. I don't know how it came up. I think we were talking about soul food or something. I don't know. But anyway, he informed me that Get Up, Get Out was actually CeeLo's song. Cause CeeLo was supposed to be a solo artist before they pulled Correct. those guys together uh, for Goody Mob. And then, you know, basically Outkast had the deal. So, you know, they gave that song to Outkast and left CeeLo's verse on there. And you can kind of tell with the approach just based on how CeeLo came with his verse and how the rest of Southern Playlistic is. You can kind of tell that's his song. Hey, you want to know what? I um, I follow Gip on the gram. Gip is actually my favorite follow on the gram. And I remember one time Gip had even bought up, like, you know, when they was doing the documentary about how, like, how many hit songs he came up with or contributed to. When you listen to a lot of those early records that are coming out from Outkast and from Goody Mob, you can really feel the collaborative effort behind it. It's like there are some records that I don't know whose record that is. Like, Bed and Dirty South sound like Cool Breeze's record? It does. And they they credit Cool Breeze for coming up with the term Dirty South, too. It's a, and I love that record. It sounds more of like a Cool Breeze record than it does hey, a Goody Mob record. Hey, you, you know what I just realized? Like, um, I think the highlights of Southern Playalistic may be better production-wise, but Soul Food is a better consistently produced album than Southern Playalistic. Like, Organized Noise got in the pocket. It was great. They, they got a nice little groove with Soul Food. Production on there is stellar, and they really literally took it to the church, like with the organs, keyboards, and like the drums behind it. It was like, it was really, really soulful. It like fit the theme, it fit what they were doing. It, it, was, it, it was pretty masterful. I think it's like one of the underrated production performances. I think what I like about Soul Food production wise, I feel like based on how big and grandioso and how much instrumentation and Southern Playlistic had, I feel like they dialed it back on soul food so they could let these guys perspectives and lyrics speak like they didn't overpower the the actual mcs with like heavy production they made sure and the stuff like you said it was still soulful but i feel like musically they dialed it back purposely so that they could let these guys perspectives be known like songs like like guess who like you you gotta let them speak see here and, and here's the thing you know and back to andre right quick it's like 
Look at his verses on Goody Mob's two first two albums, like the verse on Black Ice and the verse on Thought Process. Those are two of his best verses. I mean, Andre. I agree with him. Andre has about ten guest verses that you just are like. But it's like I don't know if it's like where it fits into the framework of our list. I think people know it and know about it. But it's like I don't know if it's there. And I think it's kind of like the same thing with Rockin and Jay and Black Thought. It's like kind of a victim of their own consistent greatness. Right. But 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 of the people that we mentioned, the only one who really does material consistently is Jay. Not saying that these two are Andre's best verses, but I think his most notable verses, like if you put it on, everybody knows the words. I might have to say his last verse on Elevators, and I think International Players Anthem, possibly. Hey, um, you want to know what? I, I, I kind of forgot about that. Like that's, I think that was a really, really popular song, and it came around at a time where Outkast was revered and respected and missed and so, like, anything that I think they would have jumped on around that time, especially, like, with QGK, like, just, I mean, even if it didn't go nowhere outside the South, that was going to bang in the South. And yeah, UGK 3-6, it's like, it was a dream collaboration. Oh, hold on, and that's a great verse, but, like, when you go look at the verses that we chose, and even the verses that we left out that we talked about, like... It doesn't fit in the frame. It doesn't. It doesn't and and I love framework. It. And that was the thing with the, with with all of that stuff. It's like you and me talked about like the rock in where you were like uh, the verse off the second verse off Alpha and Omega, and I was like second verse off Lyrics of Fury, and I was like, how many dudes even gonna know what we talking about? Exactly. <laughs> and it's like it's tough to because it becomes it becomes more of opinion. And honestly, let's keep it real. All of this stuff is opinion, but we try to make the most valid you know perspectives possible. And, but when you start picking obscure verses like verse three from track number seven off of the third album, it becomes extreme opinion at that point. It's yeah. like, prove it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, my, my favorite Andre verse might be, or what I think his best verse could be possibly, uh, the first verse on Akumana. I mean, I don't know. I, I might the be words like the, Yeah, the twice upon a time. Maybe if or probably. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. That was the quotable uh, in the Source magazine for the yeah, five. I remember that. Album, so. I'm sorry, y'all. I often drift. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was high school. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was. Yeah. He slowed it down. It wasn't about the effects because Andre's always spitting. But I think a lot of the times people get caught up in his delivery. People get caught up in his inflection and all that. That that song, that verse was about none of that. That was just straight up. Just straight up. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about Babylon. But you want to know what part of what was beautiful about his verse on the Quemini as far as like a poetic and just uh, stripped down as he was on that first verse that he kicked, he got right back into some real sick delivery on that second verse when they bought the beat back. Well, I think the thing was, you know, not like, to get too I nerdy. Mean, if I'm not mistaken, he's catching the hi-hats on that record and not the bass line. And that's super hard to keep snapping on a hi-hat. Like, what he was showing us he was showing us the two sides, right? Like, that was the Gemini and the Kumini song. Cause he was like, Andre, this is Andre, you know? So each ver both verses were like two different versions of him. It was the Gemini thing where, you know, you got your twin. It's happening again. Wish I could tell you when, Andre, this is Andre. Y'all just gonna have to make amends. So these two people from each of these verses are gonna have to, you know, Live together, basically. No, That's kind of how I took for his two different approaches on that record. No, I dig it. He went from the flashy Dre to the, like you said, the poetic Dre. But I think that based on everything that was going on, and honestly, he was perfect on that album. It's probably one of the best lyrical performances I can uh, actually pinpoint on a hip-hop album ever. Andre on the Kumina. He was perfect on the record. You think you think that's better than his performance on ATM? Definitely. Definitely? Definitely. It was just so much more versatile. He was hungry on ATL. I think he took a he took a, a no Over nonsense. The woods? Huh? Over the woods? Two dope boys in the cabinet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah listen, listen. I, I, I appreciate his approach on ATL. I think he was a no nonsense MC. He's never been that serious. Yeah, he was, he's never been that serious in no his career. whole career. He was no out, career. yeah. He was going for it on that record. ATL, the actual ATL track. Yeah. yeah, he was going for it. No, no, no. It's, it's, honestly, it's not a weak verse on there from him either. 
That's what I mean. That's yeah, no, that's not always. <laughs> but I think it's cool when I was just a step above because it was like the versatility. Like you start off with Return with the Gangster. Me and everything around me is unstable like Chernobyl. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he has, I mean, America, not American Gangster. You got Return of the Gangster. The way he approached that. And I think that Rosa Parks, I give him high points on that for really killing that. And it's a hit single. His Big Boy verse, killed that too. His no, 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 Big Boy killed that too. No, Big Boy that? killed that too. Big Boy killed that Big too. That. Big Boy killed that too. That, see, hold on. That's the thing. The reason why Quim and I might be the best record of all time isn't because Dre is all time great on that album. It's because Big Boy is all time great on that album. Well, the whole song was about being back, right? And so I love the, the way that Dre approached it. His verse was more so about. Listen, man, I'm afraid of falling off. This is when we first got the, the rhetoric from Dre that he was afraid of falling off. I personally think... I, I, love, that. I, love, I love that he said that. As a fan, when I feel like that it, verse is about yeah. Tribe. I feel like that verse is about Tribe. I thought that verse was about Tribe, too, because, hold on, yeah. that's 98, and Beats Rhymes in Life, even though I like certain points of Beats Rhymes in Life, like, I even saw your post on Facebook earlier. Beats, Rhymes, and Life is more about Dilla than it is about Tribe. And I never thought that I would say that about a Tribe album because it's like, if you go look at, and I'm not a super big fan of the first album. It's, it's like a lot of other people is. I feel like I'm I like, am. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> like, for me, the low end theory and Midnight Marauders, I mean, like. I get it. Like, if you put those two albums in your top 20 and that was the only, like, group or solo artist that made two of your top 20, I wouldn't argue with you because, like, I feel that way about those records. Like, the low-end theory is super important. It's super important. Like, we should actually do underrated albums because I actually think that's one of those all-time great albums that's actually starting to kind of get missed in terms of its influence and what it really did for hip-hop. I agree. Yep. Like, hold on, hold on. Like, at some point, at some point we, we got to get to, like, what are we doing? Are we doing underrated MCs first or are we doing the verses first? Uh, we might as well do the verses since we're talking about verses. So, um, yeah, cause I mean, cause um, I was about to say, because if we start getting into Black Thoughts versus two, like, we just going to be here, like. All right. And well, we basically have qualified why certain people didn't make certain lists. All right. Well, okay. Well, this is the list we have in no particular order, people. Uh, we got AZ's verse on Life's a Bitch. That made our top 10 um, verses of all time. We also have. Man, Scarface third verse on Mom playing tricks on me. And hey, can yeah. I say something right quick? Yeah, go ahead. Like of all the songs that I listen to today, like that's one of the ones that hit me the most. Mm. Like it's a hard hitter. It's, it's it's a hitter. Like you you were on the phone reciting the lyrics last night when I brought it up. Like. And I listened to it today, and I was like, man, I was like, it's like, it's close. It, I mean, it's like 35 years ago that track came out, and it's that verse is chilling still. Every time I hear that verse, I say <laughs> this is one of the greatest verses of all time. I yeah. mean, it, it, I mean, obviously the song is about schizophrenia, uh, about, you know, basically, you know, getting out of your own head and dealing with mental illness, really. It's about uh, mental illness. That's why I was yeah. about to say it's actually a song about mental illness. It's not yeah. about being schizophrenic. It's about being bipolar, uh, being manic, about being on prescriptions, about being on marijuana, about being on alcohol, cocaine. You know what I mean? It's about all that, dude. That yeah. verse handled all those emotions. It's about it's about seeing like it's about having visions. Too. It's about being in tune with a higher power too, or a lower one. Yeah, and, and he kept bouncing back and forth with the. That's with, what with I mean. The words like, that he was like, using, like, like, it. like the way he was using his subject matter, mm -hmm. like on a basic level, but what it was saying on a deeper level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible, man. It's and then incredible. I just remember being a kid seeing that video and kind of being like creeped out. I mean, I, I think everybody was creeped out by uh, Bushwick Bill's verse, "Rest in Peace," which Face wrote too. But um, that exactly third verse, though, that third verse was spooky, man. It but was. it was brilliant. And and you want to know what's crazy? I was actually about to say, like, I can remember as a kid, Bushwick Bill standing out in that video because he was smaller, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then I remember being older and finding out that Face wrote that verse, too. And I was like, man, I was like, this dude is, I was like, that's, you know, it's too special. <laughs> too special. All right. Uh, and for a whole other reason, we got Cannabis Beast from the East.
Yeah. I think that's one of the controversial picks. That and another pick that I'm about to get to. Uh, we got Nas, Verbal Intercourse, uh, Inspector Deck on Triumph. We got Melly Mel's last verse on The Message. Uh, that's the song that hit me the most today, Mike. Did it? Okay, go ahead. Talk about it. I mean, you got to think about it. Hold on. What year message came out? Is that 1980 or is that 82? 82, I believe. 82. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm one years old. The, the relevancy of that record, like listening to it like today and the subject matter and the things that he's touching on and the way that he's approaching it, it, it was the most striking thing about all the music that I listened to today. You know, like, I know we get an underrated list and like Melly Mel didn't like make it, but it's like just listening to the He could. Today, it got me to thinking if Melly Mel would have done more material probably to make our list, he should definitely be considered in that category because that's a flawless hip hop song and that's some of the best rhyme in ever. And, and it's not it's not like, just a all time like great song it. because it's go ahead, my bad. No, 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 go ahead. I'm just saying. I was going to say, um, it's not an all-time great record just because it's old either. You know what I mean? Like, it's actually a great record. It's I mean, we've seen, a great record. I have we've seen Cube forever. sample that record. We've seen Diddy sample that record for a whole nother hit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, also, man, what, what strikes it up to me for that, for that verse in particular is just the approach of the whole song. Yeah. But... There was no blueprint for that. Like, it started the wave of actually expressing yourself through rhymes. Because before that, it was just okay. about rocking the party. Okay, so I have a question for you. Is that really the first real hip-hop hook ever? Like, the first real hip-hop hook? Not like dance, kind of disco, groove, rock the party type of thing. It's don't push me. Is that the first real hook It ever? might be. It might be. I have to do some more research on it. And some of our OGs let us know, you know. What I'm saying? Yeah, like, like yeah, there, I, hope yeah. some of the, I hope some of the G's and like some of the uh, some of the uh, some of the G's who you know who like follow us and like watch this, like like tell them to reach out because like I want to know because it's like I'm trying to think if that's 1982, I can't think of anybody putting even bar wise a hook together like that before that. Because that was before Run DMC was really even doing that's, this. That, that's two or three years before Run DMC. Yeah. If you're saying 82, I mean, when is Raising Hell? Raising Hell's the first album, right? No, nah, no, nah, the first one was the, uh, the self-titled album. I think that was self -titled 84. Album. That's yeah. 84, 85, though, right? Mm -hmm. It was 84, I believe. 84. Let's go That's ahead and be accurate. Um, so I have my trusty, dusty computer right here. Yeah. We, I believe that is, let's see, because I think Raising Hell was. That might be. Actually, 84. that was 84. That was 84. That debut album was 84. Okay, I think they had shit out in the streets in like '83, though. You know what I mean? Like they had, um, it's like that, and I'm sure that. Um, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. MCs. Even, but even those, like, okay, so like Run DMC's hooks are more like chants and like like right. anthems. It's, it's more like stadium hip hop music, which is cool because that's like the introduction to like 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 all that. And that we need that. Dope. But if we're talking about like just bars on a hook and like, and then somebody coming in with the verses like after the hook, that's. That's like, you know, it's the message. All right, we got Slick Rick, A Children's Story, which is one long verse that I think everybody on earth knows. Um, and the beat. And the beat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the beat got recycled again for Montel Jordan to make another classic. Yeah, it went number one, I think. I think this is how we do it with number one. Uh-huh. I, I remember, man, I vaguely remember, like, I think this was elementary school earlier than that, but everybody knew the words to a children's story and it was one of those songs where i felt left out if i didn't know the words and even to this day if you play that shit at, at the club or the party whatever everyone knows once upon a time not long ago it's one of the best starts ever to a record too which i think we could actually have a discussion about too a lot of that, a lot, a lot, a lot of that just has to do with uh, Slick Rick's uh, voice, his cadence, and his character yeah. ability. And I mean, he really is. I mean, even for all the storytellers that have come along, I mean, he is. He's done just enough material that he's still in that conversation as like greatest storyteller album ever. As far as like albums, I mean, I, I still believe the greatest adventures of Slick Rick is still the best album story or content-wise that have been put together. It's like, you can't show me another album that has better quality stories told by him. You know, there are a couple of albums that come close and come to mind, 
And I think like there are artists like Scarface and Goface, Goface and Oz and Biggs that have done a lot of tracks that are super, super high level and maybe even exceed that level. But he literally told like a story from I believe song number one to song number twelve. <laughs> yeah. Like, seven, seven, yeah. Extremely yeah. difficult to pull off. He, yeah, he was the ground level of that, and it was a high bar, too. You yeah. know, guys eventually caught up, but, yeah. And, that, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's probably the masterpiece on a masterpiece of a storytelling album. I mean, I mean, Mona Lisa, I really feel like that's one of those few albums, kind of like Paid It For, where you have arguably four records on there that could be mentioned in, like, a top 50 hip-hop all-time list. You got Mona Lisa, you got that, you got... Um, you got um, uh, Teenage Love, and you got Hey Young World. Hey Young World. That was a heavy record. Favorite. I mean, yeah. I, I'm pretty much certain that that's where Nas got the world of Georgia from. That Between that and Scarface, because he's a big Slippers fan. Hey Young know, World, the world is yours. What a great record. Yeah, you're right. Great record. That's my favorite record on that album. But you're right. Me too. The songs are classics. Yeah, Hey Young World and Mona Lisa are actually my personal favorites. I mean, the first record is actually the funniest record. <laughs> I'm not even going to like it. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> but you know what? One of my OGs, his OG said that uh, Great Adventures of Slick Rick, he thought was better than Illmatic. And when you think about it, I mean, it sounds funny to a certain generation. But if you think about it, I can see how somebody who was there might felt a different way. See, I, I, I have the good fortune of, like, you know, for me, like, I got to a lot of that early. I have cousins who were like into hip hop that are that were four and eight years older than me that grew up around me. So I got a hands. I can remember when Slick Rick's album came out. Yeah. Like I can remember that. I can remember being in the in the car in my mom's Bronco with Vici. Like when he would put the tape in, when he would be going to work to pick up his check when we were up in my phone. You know, <laughs> that. vivid memories. Yeah, no, 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 vivid memories. A lot of like why I love hip hop is because a lot of my my uh, a lot of my time with my cousins and our our bonding was spent to like you know the music being played in the back. And so like Public Enemy, Rockin', Slick Rig, uh, N.W.A. Like like all that. I heard all of that. I was hearing that when I was eight, nine, ten years old. Now my mom and my aunts did. <laughs> right. You know, but my cousins were putting me on to that. So, like, when people talk about criminal minded and paid in full and the greatest event, Slick Rick, and they tell me that, like, they think it's better than Illmatic or Ready to Die and Reasonable Doubt, I know where they're coming from because I right. have cousins that were kind of in a frenzy about those albums. And, like, I can remember when the greatest adventures of Slick Rick came out. Like, my cousin Beach was like, yo, I got to have that. Like, you got to go get that. It's the same way that my cousin Mario was with Illmatic. It's the same way I was with the Quimini. <laughs> right. I mean, it's interesting, man, in today's time where we have so much access to music and so much access the information to think that there was a time where the only way you had the music is if you actually went and physically got it or it physically got it from somebody Damn. you know what i'm saying like <laughs> that that's crazy to think now i'm fairly certain that when before my cousin put slick rick's tape in for the first time he told me like don't say nothing to your mother or my mother <laughs> right right <laughs> all right well we got uh tupac's first verse on ambitions of a rider brilliant Speak on that, man, because that was. Say, I was going to ask you to speak on that. You tell me, because I'm I'm like the big big pop fan. So. No, nah, I mean, I think that the first couple of bars, like we said last night when we were compiling this list, said a lot about him as a whole, and said a lot about where he was just coming out of jail, coming with this all eyes on me project. I think, um, and I don't know if I've ever expressed this to you, like you know how the NBA has a logo and Jerry West is the logo. Mm-hmm. I think if hip hop were to have an actual logo and like trademark, it, like Pac should be the logo because he actually does embody everything that's uh, good and bad about hip hop. I can see that, you know, and I don't mean that like in any sort of, you know, in R.I.P. and God bless the dead, of course. But you know, he's a very conflicted and a very complex man, and the complexities of who he was at one of his most tumultuous points, and then finally being set free, like that person, all of those things. It's the good, the bad, the ugly, the brilliant, the poetic, you know, the guy who loves the girl still. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all those things. Who know? respects the women and then at some point can disrespect some women. Well, think about it. Right. What, hold on. What's the record right after Ambition is a rival? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every other city we go. That That's like I get around part two. 
I, only Pac could do that, you only know. Pac I could get away with that. <laughs> yeah, and be like really real with it, because it's you like know, but, but we because understand. he was honest, because he was honest, and like was I honest. think ambitions of a writer of all his honest verses, that's the most honest verse that is the best lyrically put together. I think it also helps that it opened up. A, on an album that was so big and so huge, and and I think that that track, if we want to talk about impact, you That's know, being cool. able to quote the shit, I think that everybody knows that track when it drops, and everybody knows so many battlefield scars are driven in plus cars, and life is rap stars, nothing without God. Come on, every you know, you put that on, everybody's quoting that. Man, my attitude is fucking because motherfucker love it. Be a soldier. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it checks that's, all the marks. Man. Hey, hey, best dad's is best beat. Okay, I'm with that. Dad's is best beat. Dad's got a lot of good stuff, but Dad's is very proud of this record too. So Dad's will probably agree with you. Yeah, he's and very proud of this. I mean, it's like, and it's like I told you last night. It's like, like his verse on ambitions as a rider and uh, Nas's verse on time to be like those are the two best like lyrical like starts off start off to do albums ever. Man. Hmm. Like, yeah, I can't think about I, I can't think of I can't think of albums that start off better than they look, like that they started off in that. like that's what I think of Pox first and a lot of people still think New York State of Mind is not his best song and like I'll put like Ambitions of a Rider right next to that I was having a conversation I think it was with Mickey Fax man uh, shout out to Mickey Fax out there we both agreed that New York State of Mind 2 was better than 1 I saw when y'all said that and I really think y'all are bugging Okay. <laughs> Where we were coming from, oh, where I was stop coming it, stop from. It, stop it. Go ahead. I'm, my ramen is a vitamin held without a capsule. Yeah. Y'all think you don't say the mind too is better? I think the production's better. Mm, I, 50 50 on that. I like his I like his approach on part two. It's Take tough to follow up. up. You gotta give up. people the I give people fit. benefit of the doubt when they niggas one ran. I made a back flip. Heard a few chicks scream. My arm shook. Couldn't look. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Stop that. That's too vivid. Stop that. He's not. That I, I feel you. I feel you. I, you know what? Man, I don't know. I can't refute that. It's hard to refute any Illmatic stuff, man. All right, well, let's go to the it next verse. <laughs> top ten uh, hip hop verses of all time. For people who are just joining us, we are doing the top ten hip hop verses of all time. This is based on impact lyricism and just people being able to quote this record whenever it comes on. We got Prodigy's first verse on Mob Deep Shook One Part Two. I got you stuck off the realness. I mean, how can we leave that off? We almost did. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. If I'm not mistaken, I mean, I, man, we we, we we scratched off one of my favorite verses ever about that verse. Yeah, man, that verse had to be on there. No, I got you stuck off the realness. You want to know what hey, you know my favorite mixtape mixes of all time is? Is on the Funk Flex tape where he plays that verse over the Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Me. Jeez. It's it's masterful. I and shout it, out to Flex, man. Flex is mixtapes for everything. And we, you know what? We threw, um, we threw Lil Wayne's Amelie on here. Um, pretty yeah. much one long verse solidifying everything that everyone in the mixtape era of Wayne was was basically vouching for it, you know because this came this made him a superstar i believe a millie is the song that made lil wayne a superstar i'm gonna tell you what i tried to do today i tried to listen to a song that i thought like encompassed everything that wayne was like in full better than that song and i couldn't find one. like i kind of went through his catalog today and i was like and I was listening to certain records, and I was like, nah, I was like, this is the one. This is probably the one, you know? Like, like how about this? Like, if he gets, like, a Lifetime Achievement Award, this is, like, like that's the song that's going to play in the background, probably. And I know people are saying, like, yo, Wayne on the list, but you don't have uh, Rakim, Jay. And it's not about the individual. It's about the actual verse and what the verse did for yeah. just the public and, you know, and for the individual itself. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, not I like saying that that's a better verse than anything that Rock Kim ever spit. That's definitely not what we're saying. No, but I mean, I, it like, checks all the boxes. I listened to Microphone Fiend today, and I was like, "You want to know what? It's like, you know, Microphone Fiend in a lot of days was what a Millie was. Then it's just that one verse of Rock Kim just, but 
I don't even know if it's, I don't think it's the best verse on that album though. <laughs> it's like if I was a big rock, I'd be like follow the leader and 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 lyrics of Fury lyrically is yeah. better than microphone theme. Agree. Even if we went, um, uh, I don't bug out a chill. It's just acting ill. No tricks in '86. It's time to build Eric Beasy on them. Yeah, I mean, I like the that, first verse better. That, you know, like like for me, if I feel a certain type of way, and I think I said this to you, it's like, like that first verse on Eric B as president is so impactful, and everybody knows the first bars to kind of like the Tupac's ambition is right. I came in the door. I said it before, but. You and I have this argument, and here's where the consistency comes into play. Much like microphones, and it's like, yeah, but there are like three or four verses on that album that are. That's the thing. That's the thing. And that becomes thing. the thing where it's like you kind of get marred by having made so many great verses on your great albums, where it's like we're looking at it, and it's like, 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 how do we pick that verse? Like, like, like. We could easily pick like, that, or we could easily pick thinking of a master plan. Or the third verse one, I ain't no joke. I take you through a walk through hell, freeze your dome, and watch your eyeballs swell. That, that, <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> I, that, that sticks out for me, too. Is that, that like, that's, that, lyrically, that's better than what he's saying on Eric B as president. And not even to mention No The Ledge, right? If we went there. Black Gambino. Man, Dark. shout yeah. out to Rock Kim. Yeah. In my opinion, the greatest lyricist to ever live. I can tell and I think he easily could have made this list with paid in full. But unfortunately, I think that he has so many greater verses than that. We would be remiss to actually put one hey, of those hey, verses hey, on the list. Hey, hey, you want to know what? Like, like, here's what I mean. Like, uh, like the saga begins, the Pete Rock joint off the 97 album, off the uh, uh, 18th letter. Yeah. The saga begins. Like, man. Yeah. Those verses. Do you want to attempt to try to put these in some sort of order? Let's finish the list and let's see. I just finished the list. Got, All right, I'll, I'll, I'll recap the list. How about that? Oh, we're done. All right, we got done? AZ's Life's a Bitch. We got uh, Cannabis' verse on Beast from the East. Mind Playing Tricks on Me, the third verse, Scarface. We got Verbal Intercourse by Nas. We got Inspector Deck's first verse on Triumph, Wu Tang's Triumph. We got Melly Mel's uh, last verse on The Message, Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five. We have uh, Tupac's Ambition of Arada, first verse. And we have the first verse of uh, Shook Ones uh, by Prodigy, Mob Deep, Shook Ones Part Two. And we have uh, Lil Wayne's Amelie first. I'm going to tell you right now, like, my first inclination is that, like, Amelie is last. Okay. Dex verse That's on my Dex. inclination as well. Dex verse on, when you're just saying it out loud, Dex verse on Triumph is probably, like, somewhere in the middle at five. And I probably still have verbal intercourse at number one unless you're going to argue me down. So that's my one, five, and ten right now so I can kind of fit everything else in. I don't want to go just super nostalgic and say that, you know, Melly Mel's verse on the message is number one, but I do think it should be top three. I personally think I personally think that um I think Scarface verse on Mind Playing Tricks on me is top okay. three. Man. Okay, so we're on the same page then, because I was actually thinking the same thing, because after verbal intercourse, when you listed all the verses out, I was actually like facing first of Mind Playing Tricks is really sticking with me right now. Yeah. On that. Yeah. Um, not, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you're saying Melly Mel and the message is top three, it's like. It's top five. You know what? I'm okay, I'm about to say because, Yeah. Because it's like. I think Prodigy's verse on Shook One's part two and AZ's verse on Life is a Bitch. Like, one of those are top five verses. I agree with you. I'm, I'm not going to fight that. And I do think Slick Rick's a children's story verse. That's that might have in. to be top three. Because if we're talking about impact and people knowing it and it being lyrical and it being like the start of the whole storytelling wave, it's... So we're going to disagree, and I never thought I would disagree with somebody about Slick Rick because I'm such a big fan of his, and I actually have, like, all his shit. Like, but I would actually put Children's Story on the back end of this list. Not okay. All right. Out. We got a million at 10. We agree with that. Yeah. Now, at number nine, Let's do, i say number nine, I think Cannabis Beast from the East. That's kind of controversial because 
Uh, when you said and earlier, all these are from classic it. albums, I don't think this is from a classic album. Actually, I love when, Lost Boys. When, 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 when you talk about it, this is probably the only version that's not from a classic album. Mm -hmm. These albums are classic. This first was obviously a, 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 a coming out party for... Is this the, the Music Make Me High album for the Lost Boys? This is uh, Love, Peace, and Happiness. So it's the second one. It's not that one. No. Yeah, yeah. No, music makes me high is like from the second one, right? No, no. Music makes me high is from um, what was the first the, one. what was the joint? Yeah, off, off, what was the joint off of that one? Other Love, peace, and happiness, and they used the Hey Young World sample. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. So I'm comfortable with putting beats from the East and not. Okay. All right. I'm looking at the rest of this list. Um. Yeah, I probably put pocket. I would eight. say pocket eight. Yeah, probably pocket eight. And then we got. Now we're gonna have to put A Z against Inspector Deck. Wow, life's a bitch versus the triumph. First, I think that the triumph. What's the better record? What's the better record? <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> triumph. <laughs> Really? I guess yeah. I'm biased too. <laughs> but which is crazy because I love Wu Tang too, but it's like yeah. that's Matic. You know how I feel about Matic. You know, the I thing mean, about I mean, Triumph. You know, you know, in the back of my mind, when you want to know what? I'll put Deck above AZ just because of this. And I don't care what anybody says. Like the second best verse on Triumph is, uh, is Mess Verse. I think so too. And you know, I'm a ghost guy. And I think those were awesome guy. on there. And you know, I love but Beth came in there. And, and, and I love Ray and Jizza. But on Life's a Bitch, I'm still not even certain if AZ still has the best verse. Nas's verse is ridiculous on Life's a Nas's Bitch. Nas's verse is ridiculous. I think that so, we, kinda, so, so we got used to hearing Nas so, on the whole album. So That's why. So, 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 yeah. so, so Deck shined on a track where, I mean, Meth is on there, Jizz is on there, Ray is on there, Ghost is on there, Riz is like the whole clan's on there. Everybody's and, on there. And he and he leveled up on all of them on the on the single to the album that everybody That's what I before. that's why that's what so, I was saying. Yeah, so yeah. I'm actually <laughs> yeah. Like A Z's gonna have to slide down because it's like nah stay up still yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll put A Z at seven on this one. Yeah. Uh but that's just assuming that well, okay. Actually, actually, you don't want to know what the real question is. Is like, is Dex verse better than Prodigy's verse on Shook Ones? Actually, okay. Well, I mean, we're we're, we're gonna get to that. Uh, do you yeah. think Az's verse is better than Slick Rick's verse? Mm, either way you want to call that, I'm cool. I don't think we can say that on the impact level. I think on the impact. I mean, nobody. I think. A, I mean, Az's definitely the first guy that I can ever recall that got a deal off a of verse. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still the children, the children's story, though. Children's story is one of the best rap songs ever. Still, it's like a yeah. bitch. But children's yeah. story was a single and a hit record on top of everything. You <laughs> and it was one verse. And it was one. You want to know? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So A Z is seven, and, and I think we can agree that A Z likes a bitch verse isn't better than Scarface Mind playing tricks on me verse. No. Uh, is it better than Melly Mel's The Message and, and it's funny, And it's funny because it's like, if you would have told me like two days ago that like Scarface's verse, like if you would have been like, hey, Coop, what you taking? Like, mind playing tricks on me? Scarface verse, like AZ's Life's a Bitch verse. I would have been like, what? 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 Like, like, but when I started listening and then I thought about it and I was like, hold on. Like, yeah. That yeah. verse is brilliant. I, I know. Yeah. I, mean, I can't say that yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can apologize to Scarface for even thinking that. Yeah, it that verse is brilliant. Verse is. And again, it's not on some lyrical miracle, whatever, you know, it's nah, very simple, nah, but nah. like you said. Stuff. Hey, can I say something right quick, too? And I want people to understand something. It's like, I know there are like a lot of cats who have been on the underground and done a lot of stuff. And you and I, we listen to a whole bunch of things and a whole bunch of projects. And there are even guys like Royce that have had crazy verses and, and even M and like guys that have done stuff. Like like we're measuring in and factoring in the fact that like people know a lot of these verses that we're talking about in the hip hop community, know these albums and 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 know like the context of what we're talking about and when we're talking about it. It's like you can't bring up an abstract verse from an album that like only like, you know, two hundred and fifty thousand people bought 
and then say it's like one of the greatest verses ever because that kind of discredits the dudes that wrote comparable verses that actually got it out to the masses or cemented themselves with legendary status with these verses. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. And, you know, again... That's the politics. It's politics as usual. It is. But sometimes, you know, greatness breaks through that and, you know, uses that politics and it just amplifies it to a whole nother level. Because, again, I think that my playing Tricks on Me being a huge record obviously helps the fact that we considered that third verse. That could have been easily looked over. That's That that may be the most important record in Southern hip-hop history because that is the game it changer is. and the groundbreaker. Yeah. It is. Like, like my mind playing tricks on me is the first rap record that I heard on the radio consistently in Atlanta, Georgia. Here's the debate. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's not even skip over this. And I think this is a good one. Uh, AZ's verse on Life's a Bitch or Nas Verbal Intercourse. Okay. All right, I got you. Not even. It's a similar concept because it's like AZ's featured on Elmatic, Nas is featured on The Purple Tape, which I think is possibly one of the most lyrical hip-hop albums ever. So the fact that he's walking in there against the Klan, basically, he's the only outsider on the album. He's the first outsider to make an album. <laughs> first of all, crazy. like, there's Into the Wu-Tang. Yeah. Cal. Uh, Return to the 36 Chambers. Yeah. Three albums in, and so on Ray's album, yeah. was, you know, he was batting clean up, and that was the first time you heard somebody rapping yeah. for Rizzo beats that wasn't part of the clean. You're right. It's part of the legendary status of it, though. It's like, yeah. look, it's like they let, they let, uh, it, it was almost like, it's like, you know, like Wu Tang was on some cult shit, dude, and it was almost like, it's almost like, so, you know, they walked down through the tunnel and let them hear one of Rizzo's beats, and look what the fuck happened. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess hold this on, is where on, this on, is going. Hold on. Hold on. But also, I'll say something too. It's like you know, I'm a big, big fan of the Purple Tape. I mean, actually, after Illmatic and Equimini, I might have the Purple Tape at number three personally for me. It's the top five for me. Yeah, okay. like Purple Tape might be number three for me, and that's one of the most lyrical albums ever and some of the best verses that i've ever heard came off that album and the fact that he walked in there while the clan was in their prime and did that on that album for how lyrical that album was and the fact that that was the verse that stood out like i'm going to tell you what like one of method man's best verses is on that album to a method man how about this method oh. man's two best method man's two best hooks not named cream are on that album one of Dex's best verses is on that album. One of Jizz's best verses on, on You God's album. best verses on that album. You God's best verses on that album. <laughs> Master Killer's best verses is on that album. One of Capadonna's best verses is on that album. Ray's best shit is on that album. Some of Ghost's best verses are still on that album. And Ghost has had a killer ass career. And the fact Perceived that he walked in there awesome. and the fact that he walked in there with all that type of shit going on. Mm -hmm. it, with that Proceed with caution and when you get to the symphony. If it was 16 bars, it's not like he went and rambled on. Exactly. 16 bars, murdered this shit like I ain't never seen before I'm out. And it's like we talked about last night. It's like he did it like he didn't care. It's only one thing I wish would have happened on Illmatic. I mean, not Illmatic. On, only built for Cuban Links. If they would have been able to have Rakim on Glaciers of Ice and then go right into, uh, I mean, you know, I'm asking way too much. I'm You're just saying. Awesome. You're absolutely I, right. I can hear my kid ice. Hold on. Hold on. You want to know how ahead of the curve Ray is on Cuban Links? Like, Jay is talking about Meyer Lansky on American Gangster. Ray is referencing Meyer Lansky on Glaciers of Ice, which is the first single off of Cuban Links. That's 95. Like, Ray, is, Ray was ahead of the curve. Yeah, they want some other shit. If this, Meyer, if this, uh, if IG cuts us off, we're going to start over. Uh, and do uh, you know and you know pick up where we left off because I think we're getting into that first hour, but um, yeah, so, man. So hold on. So where are we at with verses? Are we just gonna pick up with verses and then pick up like with the five underrated? Just let me yeah, yeah. We'll pick up. We'll I'm, pick up with hold verses. Hold on. Since right. we're about to get off, I want to let you know like I had to sit myself under the TV because like ESPN was showing Vince Young like ruining USC's chance of being called like the greatest team of all time. And, like, that game it hurts. Man. Well, it's like I can't watch that from the side because I'm like I'm gonna start like watching the game during the podcast. That like, game man. hurt, man. Jamal Shout Charles. Jamal Charles is the freshman running back in the backfield of that championship game with Vince Young. Keep game. All right. Uh, but all right, all right. So we got AZ at seven, right? And so what yeah. I was gonna ask you, do we? All right, verbal intercourse. 
Nas versus Verbal Intercourse or Inspector Dex versus Triumph? I mean, I still... Like, how about this? Like, Nas did it to the clan in 95 when they were on top. Dex did it to his own crew in 97 when they weren't as dope. Like, Dex had everybody. No, man, I think that... I think uh, Wu Tech forever, I think they like, were better rappers than ever at that okay, point. I don't think so. I think, I think, I think, hold on, hold on. First of all, I think Ghost and Deck in particular on the Ghost, Deck, and Ray on that album. Yes. The Jizzy, you really don't hear from enough. ODB, you don't hear from at all. Method Man is Method Man. And uh, I know, think Kappa I, got better. I don't agree. Here, here's what I'm saying is that I, I have, and here's why I was bringing up how I have purple tape like third all time. I have purple tape like third all time, but if we're talking lyrically, I might have that number one. Like he outdid everybody at their peak on what may be the most lyrical album ever, and he had the best verse. It's funny you say that because I have the I have the opinion that Wu Tang Forever is the most lyrical album ever. No, 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 no. Because here's another thing. <laughs> but... Do you think the purple tape is better than Wu Tang Forever? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Not even close. Would, it's the I, best I, album Wu Tang ever put out. I would submit to you that it's arguable, possibly, that Triumph isn't even the best verse on that album because Ghostface's verse on Impossible. Okay. And Bears well, we not say like Riz's that. verse on Impossible. I mean, ain't nothing like Ghost verse. Call the answer has Jamie been shot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I got you. Yeah. All right. All right. So, all right. so, we'll so, put so it. that's what I'm saying. It's like, like Cuban Links is a more lyrical album, in my opinion. Then Wu Tang Forever, the most lyrical verse came from Nas. It's arguable to me if Dex even has the most lyrical, or it, he has the most lyrical verse on Wu Tang Forever. But Ghost's verse on Impossible might be better than Dex's verse. And okay. there are a lot of cats that feel that way. Are you okay with? Um, are you okay with uh, Prodigy Shook One verse being ahead of Verbal Intercourse or what? No, not at all. Nah. <laughs> See, this is my thing, and I think that, 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 that but that huge might be record. top five. Is it, are we in the top five? Yeah, because if we put deck at six, now we got all right. These are the five that we got. I left. mean, hold on, hold on. Is deck at six? See, I think the real conversation is is like, is should we put deck above Prodigy for Shook ones? The whole I bomb atomically, Socrates, Socrates philosophies and high prophecies can't define how I be dropping these mockeries lyrically performed on mockery. Well, clearly, lyrically, philosophy, lyrically it's better, right? Lyrically, it's better. I think that's clear. I mean, I think it's the, the way he kind of. I think like, he came impact, in like against him. He came in like against him. Like he was he the did. top in the beat up. I think the impact of Shook One's Two's verse, though, superseded. That's the thing. The impact on Shook One's Part Two is epic. Yeah, that might so. Be like, that might be the record that defines East Coast street yeah. hip-hop. Yeah. That might be the record that yeah. defines, like, that East Coast gangster rap sound. It's the and verse. It's the verse. It's the verse. I mean, and I love... Your brain with your nose bone. You all alone yeah. in these streets, cousin. <laughs> Listen, man, I love Havoc, but I don't think people even really know how Havoc's verse starts on there. Like, I mean, on a grand scheme, I mean, it's all about prodigy. For every rhyme set I that like. Off. For every rhyme I write, it's 25 to life. Of course we know. But okay, I'm just yeah, saying, sorry. you know, it's nowhere near what the first verse was. Oh, no, no, no. The drop-off is epic, but also, too, at Havoc made that beat. So, like, you know. Of Daniel course. Was... It's an assist. It's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what a group's supposed to be. He's a wonderful John Stockton. Havoc is underrated as a producer. We talked about this the other night, too. Yeah, yeah. A uh, ninth one that just beat him. By... Did you see what the uh, result of that was? No. Ninth Wonder won... It had to be like by a handful of votes because it said fifty point one to forty nine point nine. Wow! It's as close as you get, so you know. Okay, that's can't be bad at that. But it's like I was telling you, like you know, I think some of that is generational. I think a lot of cats don't even know who Mob Deep really is and haven't really gone into their catalog and heard some of Havoc stuff. Like, there's some of Havoc's even more obscure stuff, and the beats are great. Like, like Nighttime Vultures. Like, like how about this? My favorite Prodigy verse outside of Strict Ones Part 2 is his verse on Nighttime Vultures. That's what Raekwon, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, that verse, the, the still shining verse. But I listen to some of those yeah. tracks, and I'm like, man, those beats are fucking dope. We just went over our time doing a... Uh... We were doing a recap, actually.
Let me go ahead and get my man Coop back in here. Let's see. Shout out, everybody come back in the room. Yeah, we were just doing a recap of the most impactful hip hop verses of all time. Shout out to everybody that's getting in the room. Got to get my man Coop back in here um, so we can continue this countdown. But with number 10, we had uh, Lil Wayne to Millie. Number nine, we had um, Cannabis' verse from Beats from the East. Let's see if he's back in here. Let's see. Hold on. Let me go ahead and get him back in here. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's get Coop back in here. Shout out to the homie Coop. Here's a recording of hip hop. He's getting back in the room. Shout out to everybody that's in the room joining us for this countdown. Make sure Coop gets back in here. What's good? You back? You back? Yeah. I'm sorry I had to refresh and reload right quick. No, it's all good, man. You know, we went over our hour, but yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up by right? at the point at the at this I'm point. Say, we still got the underrated MC. No, no, no. Forget all we'll that. Get we got to that. time now. We'll... Nobody going nowhere. I got something I would like to submit to you right quick that I thought about before we were on a brief intermission. What do you think is Inspector Deck's second best verse? I would say that um Oh, so oh yeah, 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 yeah. We get your verse in there. I would say that his verse on uh, Guillotine, man. Thank you. So what take what poisonous what paragraphs, smash the phonograph and half of it is the death on the warpath. War yeah. First class, leave a mic in the cast. Yeah. Causing ruckus like the aftermath when guns blast. Run Listen, man, everybody. Rhymes running wild like a child in a walker. <laughs> everybody showed their so, ass. So hold on, on hold on, tape. hold on. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Everybody showed their ass on the purple tape. Yeah. Nobody showed their ass like that verse on verbal intercourse. That's what I'm saying. Oh, like, it's the best verse on one of the most lyrical albums ever. So yeah, I, I can give you that. Yeah. But where it falls short is the impact. You're right, because of all those uh like, how about this? Because his verse on verbal intercourse probably isn't as... It, well, it's not even a question. It's not as impactful as children's story, even though no. it's superior. Yeah, through the lights, cameras, in action, glamour, glitter, and gold unfold. The but, scroll, it's so, but, it's so, but, it, but it's so impactful. Like, it, it, it's like I was telling you. It's like, you know, Nas is, is New York's, you know, street, street reporter. And, like, that's the best street report rhyme ever. You know? It's hmm. like impactful. Niggas come home. Some will go in. Do a bullet come back? Do the same shit again from the womb to the tomb? Mm -hmm. Unpredictable, you know. Like I think street, I personally, that street reporting. This might be unpopular, but I think just based on you know just keeping it consistent with everything he was saying, this countdown encompass. I think you got to put Prodigy's verse on Shook ones over verbal intercourse. I think you just do. Hold on, hold on. We're, we're in the top five right now. Let me do a recap. You, if we, you're telling me that verbal intercourse is in the top three verse, I have a problem. I do. Cause, I think Shook One's got it, man. Because I think it's the most lyrical verse of the ones that were up uh, that are up there. I think where it lacks, it might be the most lyrical one. I, actually, you know what? Based on what I see here, because what we got left is verbal intercourse. We got Melly Mel's The Message verse, Slick Rick's The Children's Story. Um... Scarface's verse on um, my playing tricks on me and we got shook one. So yes, it's the most lyrical one left. But is it the most impact? Like Okay, like 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 for me how, for, so when you say that, like I literally think in this order. I'm thinking verbal intercourse, my mind playing tricks on me, the message, shook one's children's story. So you got verbal intercourse number one. Greatest hip hop verse of all time. I mean, okay, like so here's the thing. First of all, it's a straight sixteen. Prodigy's not a straight 16. Face is not a straight 16. Melly Mel's not a straight 16. It's the shortest of all of them, too. Yeah, but, I mean, you're giving it points for that. <laughs> it's more impactful. It's like the Jizza set on Wu-Tang Forever. Too many uh, too many songs. Weak rhymes is mad long. Make it brief, son. Half short. Twice strong. You know what? We gotta If we're going to start nitpicking here... We this are is, nitpicking. It's a tough if we're gonna game. start nitpicking here, we are nitpicking this is a stuff. this is a recycled Nas verse. Honestly, if we want to start nitpicking here, this isn't even a verse that he you know that made him matter. Okay, okay. So now, since you want to do that, I have to point out the fact that <laughs> I'm an actual writer and will write a song two or three or four times that is like really uncommon for you know rap artists to do. So you're going to tell me that he's a victim of actually have, being capable of writing like six No, no, I, I actually give him points for it. 
you. I actually give him points for, you know, the fact that he was able to have a verse that great in his arsenal. But at the same time. Here you go, yeah. Ray and Ghost. Thanks, Rizza. Yeah, I mean, I, I give him props for not being that one to try to pile it on. That's that's, that's that Barry Sanders shit that I was talking to you about. It's like, yeah, it's like he just walked in the booth and ran 75 yards on the first carry, though, Mike. But I can't justify that this verse is a greater verse than Slick Rick's The Children's Story verse. It's, Obviously, it's, it's more lyrical. I don't even think, like, like for me, like, the fact, I mean... I never thought I would be arguing somebody down about Slick Rick and Slick Rick to the back for somebody. But it's this like verse, a, let's keep it real. Hey, even though all those other, all those and other and songs, don't, songs don't, are don't great. Be in the water nor soak. I need bullets. Hurry up, run. The dope fiend bought back a spanking shotgun. Yeah, like I'm love saying, it. I, I love appreciate it. the love, man. Uh, you know, what I'm saying we we love y'all participation as well. No, nah, I mean, listen, I think that a children's story is a big bulk of Slick Rick's career. This song, verse, let's just keep it real. This is one verse that made him a legend. I think that with or without verbal and of course, Nas is who he is. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I just think that a children's so story we, just holds more so, weight. So, so here we go with this output thing again, because it's like, how about this? It's like, you know, Nas did... I four and I, that's a great verse. Uh, Fast like cool giraffe, that's a great verse. Live at the barbecue, that's a great verse. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, we can't hold that against him, can we? Are we I think, him? like I said, on an impact level, I mean, just you know, where I'm coming from with it, I think on an impact level, it doesn't compete with the other. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, Mike, I want you to understand too. We're on the verge of being super old, like super old. If like <laughs> the message and the children's story are about to be in the top. Three. I agree. But some shit from '95 from Nas at his peak and in his prime doesn't make it. Like I don't know what we're doing here. Like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> we're respecting the legacies. All right, look. No, I respect. If the you want to put, like, I love Slick Rick. I don't. Even if you want to put Melly Mel, if we want to say Melly Mel, the message verse, even as groundbreaking as it is. If it's behind these, I can roll with that. I can roll with that. But it's hard for me to say that Nas's verbal intercourse verse is over Slick Rick's The Children's Story and over Prodigy's uh, uh, Shook Ones, too. Because these are career-defining. Like, what, where we hold them well, hold in the on, culture hold on, hold on. is hold based on, on, on these on. verses. Hold on. Hold on. See, what that's I, what, what I'm saying. Slick Rick and Prodigy don't deserve credit for not being as great as Nas. <laughs> that's what I'm saying and it's kind of like you're saying it's like oh it's their career defining moment it's like oh so what no, but like, I, it's not our fault that they're not better than Nas that doesn't mean that Nas can't have a career defining verse though I mean I'm gonna be honest with you if you want to like like if you want to gripe with me about it gripe with me about the fact that Nas has so many other stellar verses to choose from because I'm going to be honest with you if we're picking Nas verses it's like I actually prefer the second verse to I gave you power I yeah. prefer the third verse to Take It In Blood, the first verse to Silent Murder. Um, You're proving my point. We could we could I even say all the made you look. We could even say rewind. We could even say rewind. Pick a verse on Memory Lane. Pick a verse on Memory Lane. The third verse say, to One Love. The third verse to One Love. I agree with the that. One Life's a bitch. It's not our fault. I agree with that. I agree with that. Ridiculously high level verses because it's like because here's why I asked you the deck question. If I were to ask you that Nas question, you would have to think about it. But when I asked you that deck question, you were like, oh, poisonous paragraph, smash the phone yeah. Because because it's not because he hasn't hit that level, but so often it's like Nas is being dot points right now for hitting that level like a whole whole lot in a really short time. <laughs> and that's why we don't have any Rock Kim or Jay Z verses on here either. I mean, it's just the it's just See, the point of reference. So 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 here's my point of reference when I say that, and this goes back to the last, last podcast. When Nas is rapping like that, he's the best MC of all time. So you can give me Rakim and you can give me Jay-Z, but even their best isn't better than his best. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. And we could it. even, if we're his talking about lyrics, his we could throw Rewind his, in there, his, right? His, his Rewind, one mic. That's one verse. Like, Rewind is one verse. But see, the thing is, on an impact level, that, that, that's borderline these verses past, don't match up. That's borderline. Stillmatic is borderline past his prime, Nas. Yeah. He did rewind. 
Like you're the man. Like the second verse was was high smoking so much lie. I saw a dead bird flying through a broken sky. It's like ain't nobody talking like that, dude. When he gets that way, like like that's it. And it's almost like you're telling me that he deserves to be docked because it's like we can we can, we can start running through all his stellar verses. And you and I know the verses, and everybody else may not know them. But verbal intercourse is kind of like giving him like a certain level of respect for being that guy. When he operates on that level, he's the best MC ever, Mike. It's like that deserves some recognition. So like he deserves to be top three just because of that. That's arguably his most notable and impactful verse in a career of notable impactful verses that even exceed his peers at their best. It's like, give me your favorite J verse and tell me that lyrically it's touching verbal intercourse. So, all right. Or give me Rakim's best verse. Okay, so based on that, we're cool with saying verbal intercourse is over Melly Mel's The Message. So yeah. Melly Mel's The Message is going to be our number five. five. All the old we got, hands so we got, hate so we got me Scarface, right now. So we got Scarface, Slick Rick, Prodigy, Niles, correct? That is what is left. We have it's crazy that we ended up with those four guys. Now hold on. Now tell me, tell me of who those guys, who the best MC is. <laughs> it's Nas. Okay. It's Nas, and saying. then it's Slick like, Rick, and then like, I mean, no, I'm sorry, about, it's Nas and about, Scarface. How about this? We're talking about the best verses ever. What I'm trying to express to you is that this is actually Nas's wheelhouse. We're not in these other guys' wheelhouse. We're actually in Nas's wheelhouse. So it's like, you know, like if we're talking best stories of all time, children's story is number one on my list because any other story that you're going to tell me that's just as good or better isn't as impactful. Like we can go to, uh, we can go to Rewind, Niggas Bleed, um, a you know, can by Ice Cube, you know, like we can go through those, but they're not going to be better than children's story. We're in Nas's pocket right now. We're talking about like the bars. Well, you're I mean, selling me on the Nas even thing. Even with storytelling, it's, sac it's Scarface too. With the storytelling thing, it's like, like if you, like, I can give you some Scarface stories that are gonna rate above Nas's stories if we're gonna talk about the storytelling. Ghostface, like Shaky Dog off Fish Scale. I love Shaky Dog off Fish Scale. <laughs> That's rap stories ever. Like he's New York State of Mind type of vivid with his bars on Shaky Dog. What you're selling me on verbal intercourse is the fact that it was the best verse on the most lyrical hip hop album ever possible. Man. So that's a and it was coming off the heels of a year after he put out Illmatic. So no, I, I, I give What's, it high points for that. Like like how about this? I think the second best verse Inspector Deck ever did is on Cuban Links and Method Man. Like I think Mess Bur I think Mess best verse is the first verse on Shadow Boxing. But I think his second best verse is the verse on Wu Gambino's. And that's his really? best, and that's his third best hook after cream and ice cream. Like ice cream is one of the best rap hooks ever. Like there's so much brilliant stuff. I think it's his there. best hook, personally. I I think ice cream's his best hook. No, no, cream's the best rap hook ever, Mike. Okay. I, I'm not mad at that. Me personally, I like ice cream better, but yeah. I'm with you. Something that some dudes from Staten Island said in 1993 on one of the grittiest albums ever literally transferred its way through pop culture and even to white America organically, like without them trying. Like, no, we talk about impact, white people though. what cream is. They'll tell you <laughs> cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill. And see, you're giving it dollar. points on its greatness based on the impact, right? It's epic. Yeah. It's the best I'm giving ever. ice cream. I'm giving it's ice cream points ever for rap. <laughs> but listen to me. I'm giving ice cream points it made on the fact talk. that I liked it. You're doing the same thing hey, with hey, verbal intercourse. Look, look here. <laughs> hey, 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 look here. Look here. All that protect your neck and chest box and shit is cool, but cream is is why they are where they are. I agree with you. <laughs> well, but that's why I'm saying even in this countdown, we got to put verbal intercourse in perspective because these other verses are more impactful. Now, I would say that the Scarface verse, okay, we could we could you debate that, but it's hard to debate the impact of Slick Rick's and Children's Story verse in the Prodigy Shook ones. It's hard. Okay. So how about this? Like, I feel like what you're doing right now is you're rating the quality of the songs as a whole because Children's Story, Mine's Playing Tricks on You, and Shook One's Part 2 are probably more revered overall track-wise than verbal intercourse. 
And so, yeah. so, 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 and 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 I and I and I, and I will uh, I, I will agree, and I will even acquiesce to that to a degree. But we're talking about the best verse times ever. You're right. And I think that, that, that you want to know what I'm gonna give you the slick rig shit because I'm tired of arguing. arguing. I'm sorry, I'm tired of disrespecting slick rig. Like I'm just gonna give I'm gonna give you Rick. It's a I big verse, I man. I can't, I can't, I can't, I, can't I, I don't know if I can give you. Prodigy and Face. You're going to have to give me something to put Nas Is Rick on. number one then? So, hold on, hold on. Is this the greatest verse ever then? What, Rick? A children's story. I mean, I mean, like I said, I love Rick. And, and, and I'm one of those people that it's like, I, how about this? In, when he was doing the Art of Storytelling, that album, like around the time that he was making that album, I probably still had him in my top 10 MCs. That's what I think of Rick. Yeah. And so, and I do think that The Greatest Adventures of Slick Rick is one of the best rap albums ever. Like, if I was still making, like, a top 20, 25 list, it's definitely on there. And it's not, it's, it's without question. I think it's a flawless record that you can play from beginning to end. I think that is, uh, that is obviously the biggest hit and most memorable record off that album. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and he has influenced so many people, including Nas. Like, you know, Nas is a big Slick Rick guy. He has a picture of Slick Rick hanging in his house and shit. He's our favorite so, rapper's favorite rapper. Ghostface too, you know. He, 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 yeah, same thing with Ghost. Ghost, you know? Ray, like, like the Frozen shit with, with Slick. Like mm -hmm. that's that's one of my favorite joints. Um, so, it's hard to say that's not the best verse ever because again, no, like that's said, what I'm saying. It's, it's one like, of the greatest songs if we're, if we're, ever. If we're, if we're one we're verse. Hold on, if we're talking about everything that we're talking about, first of all, it's a big hit record. Mm -hmm. Check it's that box. Yep. It's lyrical. The MC is an all-time great MC. So it's like if you want to tell me that it's a children's story. That's a little shocking to me that we're saying it out loud. It's shocking to me too, but that's what it's looking like based it's on the criteria. Like, because it's like when you say it like that, and when we're talking, and when you bring up the impact side of it and what you're talking about, I get what you're saying because I'm looking at it like Cuban Links is a top five hip hop album. Well, Link we got Nas at number two then. Are you cool with Nas at number two? Uh, two or three, because I was actually going to say, here's my thing. It's like, like, how about this? We got Millie Mel at number five. I'll take Prodigy at four. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and, and, and if you wanted to put face above God, mind playing tricks on me, I wouldn't like, I'm not going to raise hell about that. I'm going to raise hell if that verse not in the top three, though, because this is All right. hard. We'll do this. We'll put, we'll put face at three, I mean at two. We can put face that too for mind playing tricks. I mean, I told you, yeah. like, like Melly Mel and face is what stuck with me today, and 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 my mind playing tricks on me. Like I said earlier, if we're talking impact because here's where Nas is losing, like like his verbal intercourse. My mind playing tricks on me and children's story. I mean, those yeah. aren't a lot of people's top ten like rap records ever. Like 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 from their era, like cats from their era. If you tell them to make a top ten list. Both of those songs are probably on their top ten. I and not to sound like, like an old nigga, nigga, but it is what it hold is. On, hold on, Mike. Check and see if those songs came out the same year. Nah, I think that, uh, no, no, no. I think Check, my that's plan 88, tricks 89. That's 88, 89. It's 88, 88 for a, a children's story. And I want to say my plan tricks on me is like 92. No, I don't think so. Say. Is it 92? No, no, no. I know Slick Rick's 88. Maybe 89 with the Slick Rick, though. Uh, nah. The official that's... release date might have been 89. See, yeah, yeah. My playing tricks on me is ninety one, and um, a children's story is eighty eight. Eighty eight. Okay, eighty eight. Yeah. See, so 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 our one and two is eighty eight and ninety one, and our three. I mean, I hate to sound like an old nigga, but you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hold on, listen yeah. to this. Our eighty eight, ninety one, ninety five, and ninety five, and eighty two are our top five. Those are the years. Yeah. I think... That's I think, problematic, too. That's problematic for me. It is. It is. I, I think the newest verse there is, is Wayne and Millie. Uh, and, and, you know, anybody in the group, man, if y'all feel like okay. anything hold, hold, was hold, left hold. off, you go know ahead. What? And, and I was thinking about this today, too. You know, we didn't talk about Kendrick at all. Is there a Kendrick verse or a Cole verse that deserves some credence or, like, some, some sort of leeway or some sort of way in on this? You got a Kendrick first. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Control? No, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm one of those guys that it's like, and I even wrote it in the article. I'm not even sure if that's the best verse on that song. Electronica's verse on that, on that album, on that song is ridiculous. I kind of feel like Kendrick 
got that recognition because he was doing a lot of name calling. Like I don't even I don't even have that as like in one of my five favorite verses of his, Mike, if you want to know the truth. Impact wise, that well at the moment. And I the think verse, the verse the, the, the verse for me is strictly the impact. Like he has so much more stuff than that. We list we're we're in a we're in a social media age, so it's tough to really gauge things. We have to kinda wait and let time go by. But at the moment, that shit shook up the world. But I can't say that after time has passed, people even consider it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not one of those things that's reoccurring, you know? And time has shown us that it might not have been one of the greatest verses ever. Like you said, it might not even be his greatest verse. What do you think Kendrick's best verse is, since we kind of went through that with other artists? I mean, off the top of my head, the verse that came to mind when we were saying all of this was his last verse on how much does a dollar cost. Mm. Like when we were saying all this, good, I was thinking to myself, like that last verse on how much does a dollar cost is just, oh, it's it's brilliant. I mean, how about this? Until Duckworth, I think in Duckworth and in how much does a dollar cost, he put himself in that time, like, like that all time great storyteller conversation. That's why when you were asking me the other day, is he top 10? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I like, think he is. Like, yeah, he's top 10. It's just a question of where he is. Um, What about the art of um, uh, peer pressure, storytelling wise? That one sticks out for me, even though he was kind of rhyming like 3,000 on there. That's that's okay. That's that's how I feel about that record. I can I can I can hear. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. The Andre influence is is on Good Kid, Kid Mad City vocally, and the Outkast's influence is on To Pimp a Butterfly musically. I said that too. specifically. I, I said that uh, specifically. Said, Quim and I and Stankonia. Right. I think right. I said like, when, you can tell, um, like like you can tell that he was a kid that like loved the Quim and I and Stankonia. I feel like he's more uh, influenced by Outkast than he is Tupac. And when I said that in, in a mixed crowd, people thought I was crazy. But... I think part of what's yeah. brilliant about him is I actually think he's the mixture of both. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the creative side of Outkast. He's the soulful, impactful, black power side of Tupac. But he's like an epic kind of lyricist, too. Like, he's not, like I said, he's not lyrically like Nas or Black Thought or pun or rock him but he's really 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 close and All right. does so many other things well he does he's very very well rounded like how about this um the the verse on uh what, what's the verse on feel i feel niggas been out of pocket I feel yeah like, yeah that you know what i forgot about that i think that's my favorite Kendrick Lamar verse, the last verse. Last yeah. verse on field. Yeah. yeah. Either Ain't that or even if we're going to go off on some other shit, when he did that verse on uh, that Black Friday, when he went in on that um, J. Cole record. Ooh, yeah. I listen to that. Over over. Like, like, like in the back of my mind, I would put that verse of feel or that verse on how much a dollar costs over a million in the back of my mind and beats from the east like right now like when i'm thinking about it out loud. it's the impact though and you know i think that people from a certain era have an advantage over the impact part of it because of and, how music is distributed now and you want to know what and i'm real like i like like i'm real off this kid mad city is still my favorite tension from our song like you can give me a verse off that record that's really like you know like he's expressing, he's expressing the inner city blues from the perspective of the female, the male, and then himself as the guy expressing the inner city blues, and that within itself is brilliant. Let's do this. We're gonna put out this list but, as oh, is. He's, he's becoming a victim of the same thing that Rock M yeah. thought are a victim of. It's the like, yeah, verses we just started going through. Mm -hmm. That's this why that whole intercourse verse is important, Mike, because Nas is the best lyricist of the lyricist when he's on his shit. And it's like, you got to give those guys their due somewhere. Because if you go look at our list, it's like Scarface is considered great and I considered a lyricist lyricist. Um, Melly Mel, most people don't know about Melly Mel. Slick Rick, considered a storyteller, not a lyricist. Prodigy, considered a lyricist, kind of. AZ, considered a lyricist, but not really known. Like, look Super. at our list. Cannabis. Super. Pop. All right, this is Pop's this is what we'll do. Pop's not considered a lyricist. This is what we'll do, Coop. 
The, we'll, we'll like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. I just realized something. I thought we talked about you're nobody till somebody kills you. I we did. We did. Somebody got to go. Beast from the East or a Millie got to go. Like, this is what we'll do. We'll put this list out there, right? We'll right. put it to the According to Hip Hop Masses, and we'll see what people have to say about it at this point. You know, some things can be entered. Some people, some things can go away. We got number ten, Lil Wayne and Millie. Number nine, we got uh, Beast from the East, Cannabis's last verse. Number eight, we got Tupac's first verse on Ambition the Parada. Number seven, we got uh, A Z's first verse on Life's a Bitch. Number six, we got Inspector Dex's first verse on Wu Tang's Triumph. Number five, we got Melly Mel's last verse on The Message. On number four, we got Prodigy's first verse on Mob Deep Shook One Part Two. And uh, number three, we got Nas's first verse on Verbal Intercourse. Rayquan's joined on the Purple Tape. Number two, we got Scarface's third verse on Mob Playing Tricks on Me. And the greatest hip hop verse of all time, we have Slick Rick's A Children's Story verse, all based on impact, uh, lyrical <laughs> ability, content, memorable, uh, Mike, Mike. Rules, all that. Mike, it's 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 very problematic that Big and Hope didn't make this list. Big Hope, very. That's very problematic. Very. It's tough KRS to do these running, things. KRS One didn't either. I know, man. It's tough to do these things, Coop. Whenever I try to make these countdowns, you know, for according to hip hop, sometimes I get help and all I'm, that. You know, hey, I'm, it's I'm, tough. I'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you. Even if you want to give me a wink, like here's the thing, like I'm. I'm not one of those guys that thinks that Wayne is the greatest MC of all time, and I actually know dudes that actually think that and feel that way. I'm definitely not one of those guys. If I was picking a top 20, he might fall on my top 20. He'd probably fall on the back end. But I don't know how comfortable I feel with Kansas and the b first and the Milkyverse being over something Jay or Big has done. Something about that just doesn't feel right. And like, like I'm gonna be honest with you. When we talked about you're nobody till somebody kills you, that's not even my favorite Biggie verse. It's like you know, I, I, I like the first verse to my downfall. We talked about notorious thugs. You can pick a verse off kicking the door. I don't know, man. It's tough, man. Um, I think this is a good starting point. No, no, no. We about to catch some heat. Yeah, we got. I just let like, you know. We about to catch some heat. But you know what? There's this no is what. Him. There's no rock. There's no rock him, Black Thought, Big Pun, Hove, or Jay. No, man. I mean, it's listen. about to be problematic. I'm just letting you know. Listen, we're, we're putting this out there as a starting list. Let's I'm put it out there like I'm that. Not I'm not responding. And we can actually modify this thing. I'm not responding to these comments like I do my articles and shit. It's like tough, that. man. It's tough, man. Um, Underrated right. 